This video will be a compilation of clips from previous videos where I install things on my computer that are required for some projects. That way, for future projects that may require these things, I can refer back to this video. Also, it may reduce issues others might face due to not having something I have installed as part of a previous video for a given install, as these will be potential prerequisites. First, we will download Anaconda from anaconda.com. Simply click on the Download button on the home page. Double-click on the installer we downloaded. We will select the default options for the first few steps and click Next through each one. So, on this one, it says adding to path is not recommended, but clearing the package cache is recommended. So, I guess we will check the one that is recommended and then click Install. This part can take a while. Go for a walk or something? We will be using Anaconda to create virtual environments for each Python project so that we don't have version conflict issues, since some projects require certain versions of dependencies while others require a different version. With Anaconda, we will be able to keep each project in its own little world with its own installation of dependencies for its own specific versions of those dependencies. TLDR Anaconda makes life easier, in my opinion. Once this completes, click Next and then Finish. We will next download and install Git. Go to the Git-SCM website and click on Download for Windows. Then click on 64-bit Git for Windows Setup. Now double-click on the Git installer we downloaded. Select all the default options and click Next. I chose not to get the Credential Manager, so I selected None here. Continue clicking Next, and then Install. With Git installed, we will be able to easily download projects from GitHub. Once the install completes, click Finish. Go to the ffmpeg.org site and click Download. Click the Windows icon. Click on a Windows Build link under the Windows EXE Files section. Scroll down to Release Builds and select the full release file I think. Now we can right-click on the 7z file and extract it. Select 7-zip and extract here. This will create a new folder with the files in it. I am going to move these files to a more convenient location. Now we can also add the path of the bin folder where the exe files are to our system path so that we can execute ffmpeg from any folder. Copy the bin folder path. Click Start and Type Environment. Click on Edit the System Environment Variables. Click Environment Variables. Select Path and click Edit. Click New. And paste the path here. Now click OK on the open windows. Go to the Python site and click Downloads. Scroll down and find Python 3.10.11. Scroll down and click the Windows 64-bit installer. Now run the installer. Check the Add Python to Path box and click Install now. We will enable Long Path with a registry edit. Copy this registry edit from the Microsoft site and save it as a .reg file. Then just double-click that .reg file to update the registry. This file sets the long path enabled flag to true. You can get Visual Studio from the Microsoft Visual Studio website. Click download and select Community 2022. I already have it installed, but once the installer runs, you will be at this screen. Here you will want to check Mark Python development, desktop development with C++, and universal Windows platform development. And on the right side, make sure to check mark this option for C++ V143 Universal Windows Platform Tools. Then click on Install. I chose the X64 to get the installer. Since I already have it installed, it is giving me the Repair button. For you, there should be an Install button. Once you click that and installation finishes, you will need to restart your computer.
You need to find the path to this executable and add it to the path. For me, this is the location. I will copy the path. Then go to edit the environment variables. Click on path and click edit. Click new and paste the path. And then click OK on the open windows. Next, we must install CUDNN. Let's call it Kadan. We want version 8.5 for CUDA 11. Click on Local Installer for Windows. We can unzip this and leave it here for now. Next, we will install CUDA. Go to the CUDA Toolkit Archive and scroll down to version 11.7.1. .1. Select the Operating System, Architecture and Version. Select the Local Installer Type. And then click on Download. Double-click the downloaded file to launch the installer. Click OK to extract the files. Click on Next through the wizard, selecting all the default options. Once it finishes, we will see a new folder created here in Program Files in the NVIDIA Toolkit folder for this version of CUDA. In the documentation page, it says to copy the contents of the bin, include and lib folders. Go into the new folder. Go into bin. Then go into the bin of the unzipped folder from earlier, from the CUDNN. And copy these files over. Do the same for the include folder. And for the lib folder, copy them to the x64 folder. We need to set the CUDA home environment variable. I'm going to do this through the Windows environment variables. For this CUDA home variable, it should be pointing to the folder path for the CUDA toolkit 11.7. If this doesn't exist for you, you can add it by clicking on the new button. In Hugging Face, go to Settings and then click Access Tokens on the left. On this page, click on New Token. Here we can specify a name. I'm going to call it Ooga Booga. And then click Generate a Token. And now we have a token. Let's go to the environment variables and add the two variables mentioned. Click on new and for the variable name, set it to hf underscore user. For the variable value, we will go to hugging face and copy the name. Then click OK and create another variable. For the variable name, set it to hf underscore pass. For the variable value, we will copy the access token from hugging face. Paste it into variable value and click OK on all the windows. We will need to download the MinGW installer from this link. Once downloaded, launch the installer and click Install. I'm going to leave the default settings and click Continue. Once that finishes, click Continue to launch the MinGW application. Here it says to select MinGW32 Base. And this one for the GCC++. Now we must go to the Installation tab and click Apply Changes. Click Apply to install those components. Once that finishes, we can close out of this application. Before we start the install, we first need to install CMake. You can get it from this page. I will leave a link. Download the Windows 64 installer from this link. Launch the installer. Click Next through the wizard. Read the 500-page license agreement. Then check the checkbox and click Next. On this page, make sure you select the option to add CMake to the system path. Click Next through the rest and then click Install. Once it completes, click Finish to exit the wizard.